let's understand about molecular theory of magnetism. This theory explains of what particles a magnetic material is made up of and how these particles are aligned inside a magnet and other materials. Take a magnet. This end of the magnet is south pole and this end is north pole. When you break the magnet into two pieces, do you say this as single south pole magnet and this as single north pole magnet? If you say like that, that's wrong. This is one magnet. This is another magnet. Because it has north and south poles. But single north pole or single south pole magnets are not formed. Let's break these two magnets again. Observe these pieces. Now these are four magnets. Each piece is an individual magnet, with south and north poles. Further breaking these magnets into small pieces. Single south pole magnet or north pole magnet is not formed. Each piece is individual magnet. On further and further breaking into tiny smaller pieces. No single pole magnet is formed. Why single pole magnet is not formed? This was explained by Sir James Alfred Ewing through his theory known as Ewing's molecular theory of magnetism. According to this theory, if we further and further break these tiny magnets, we reach a point where these pieces cannot be break further. Let's observe this piece through a microscope. This tiny piece visible like this. This tiny piece is known as Molecule. According to Ewing, this tiny molecule itself acts like independent magnet with north and south poles, and this molecule cannot be break further. Single pole magnet is never formed. First point of this theory states that. Each molecule of a magnetic substance is an independent magnet. Let's understand second point of this theory. We know this is a tiny molecule acts like a magnet. And this is a bar magnet. This bar magnet is made of these type of molecules. How these molecules are arranged. Observe inside this bar magnet. These molecules are arranged like this. South pole of molecule is towards this end. A north pole of molecule is towards south pole of another molecule. Attraction force exists between both of them. A north pole of this molecule is towards south pole of another molecule. In this way molecules arrange themselves one after another forming long straight chains. At the end, this molecule's north pole faces this end of magnet. Throughout magnet these long straight chains are formed by molecules. At this end, all south pole of molecules point towards this direction. Due to this, this end behaves like south pole of magnet. At this end, all north pole of molecules point towards this direction. Due to this, this end behaves like north pole of magnet. In this way poles are formed. Second point of this theory states that In magnetized substances, all the molecules are arranged in the form of long straight chains such that all north poles point towards one direction and all south poles towards the other. In this way one end becomes the north pole and the other end south pole. We saw how molecules are arranged in magnetized substance. 
Now let's see how molecules are arranged in unmagnetized substance. This is iron bar. And this is a piece of plastic. Both are not magnets. So both are unmagnetized substances. Let's see inside this iron bar. Molecules are not arranged in long straight lines. Molecules are arranged irregularly. Observe this molecule. North is in this direction. And south is in this direction. Now observe this molecule. Its north and south are in different directions. But both molecules are still attracted. These two molecules are also in different directions and are attracted. Similarly, observe these molecules. All these molecules are in different directions and are attracted to each other. If you closely observe, these molecules form a closed chain. Every molecule is attracted to some other molecule and neutralized each other's magnetic effect. So at this region no magnetic effect is present. Throughout this iron bar, molecules form closed chains instead of straight long chains and cancel magnetism on each other without any south or north poles and iron behaves normally without any magnetic effect. Similarly, in plastic also, molecules are arranged in form of closed chains, unneutralizing or cancelling magnetic effect on each other. So, third point of this theory states that in unmagnetized substances, the molecules are in the form of closed chains and thereby neutralizing the magnetic effect on each other. These three points are Ewing's molecular theory of magnetism. By applying this theory, many properties of magnet can be explained. We know what is magnetization. Let's magnetize this iron bar and plastic. After a while, observe. Molecules inside iron bar starts to move and aligns themselves in long straight chains. North and south poles on iron bar starts to appear. Iron behaves like a magnet. But in plastic, molecules are still irregularly placed, and plastic do not become magnet. We can say due to alignment of molecules in long straight chains, magnet is formed. Now observe this iron magnet. Pole strength on this end is equal to pole strength on this end. Why? Let's say 5 molecules with south poles are here. And also 5 molecules with north pole are here. Because of equal number of molecules on both ends, pole strength is equal. So this theory explained why the North Pole and the South Pole of a magnet have equal strengths. This is length of iron bar before magnetization. This is the length of iron bar after magnetization. Observe the increase in length of iron bar. Why length of iron bar increased? is also explained by this theory. But for magnetization, molecules are irregularly placed. They are compressed along length. But after magnetization, molecules align, one after another, in long straight chains. Due to this regular placement, length is increased. From this theory we can conclude. When an iron bar is magnetized, its length slightly increases due to the straight chain arrangement. This iron is magnetized and became magnet. After becoming iron as magnet, if magnetized further, can it be more magnetized? No.
Why? Magnetized substance cannot be magnetized further because of its saturation with magnetism. So this theory explained why, once a given magnetic substance is saturated with magnetism, it cannot be magnetized further. This is the twisted magnetic substance. When it magnetized, there is change in its curvature. If it is plane bar magnet, there will be change in length. Ewing's molecular theory also explained why, when a twisted bar is magnetized, there will be a change in its curvature. These are molecules in a magnetic substance before magnetization and after magnetization molecules arrange in straight chains on the magnetizing molecules again irregularly placed let's see these molecules during magnetization in order to align themselves in straight chains these molecules move and their kinetic energy increases with this kinetic energy, they collide with each other. And heat energy is generated. We can say, kinetic energy is converted into heat energy. Similarly, during demagnetization also kinetic energy is converted into heat energy. So Ewing's molecular theory explained why. During magnetization or demagnetization of a substance, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases resulting in the conversion of kinetic energy into heat energy. This is a magnetic substance. On magnetization it becomes magnet. On demagnetization, it loses magnetic property and become iron again. Let's see what happens during demagnetization. This is an iron magnet. Let's demagnetize this magnet by heating. Let's observe this straight long chain. Due to heat, molecules start to vibrate. On heating from a time, molecules vibrates vigorously and breaks straight chain arrangement, placing themselves irregularly. Magnet get demagnetized. So Ewing's molecular theory explain when a magnet is strongly heated. The molecular magnets start vibrating vigorously, thereby breaking the straight chain arrangement. This result in demagnetization. Ewing's molecular theory of magnetism failed to explain some properties of the magnet at molecular level. What are those properties of magnet? Let us see. This is a magnet made from a magnetic substance. On breaking a magnet into tiny pieces, again and again, we reach a point where these tiny pieces cannot be break further. These tiny pieces are molecules. Ewing's molecular theory states that these tiny molecules themselves acts as individual magnets. But why? Ewing's molecular theory could not explain why the individual molecules of a magnetic material behave as tiny magnets. This is non-magnetic substance, let's say plastic. As we discussed, it never become a magnet, due to closed chains arrangement of molecules. To become magnet, molecules should be in straight chains. 
So behavior of molecules in non-magnetic substance is different from molecules in magnet. But why? Ewing's molecular theory could not explain why the molecules of a non-magnetic substance do not behave like magnets. This is a magnet. This is diamagnetic substance, let's say copper. When kept nearer to magnet it's repelled. But why? Ewing's molecular theory could not explain why diamagnetic substances like copper are repelled by a strong magnetic field. Main reason for these failure is at the time of Ewing, they know molecule exists. But they don't know much about molecule or its properties. Later, properties of molecule are understood by many scientists. Many theories are evolved, which explain these failures, which we learn in later sessions.